In this video, we're going to install ActiveMQ on our virtual machine. ActiveMQ is a type of Q software. Q software is really nice when programming, especially when programming with multiple processes, because one process can deposit something onto a queue, maybe an object, maybe an XML message or an image or something like that. And then that, that person who's depositing onto the queue is called the producer. There can be a consumer on the queue who then listens for things to be added to the queue and then is notified when something is added to the queue. Then it can start up and it can act on that. And it will then finish what it's doing and then wait for the next item and it's not processing anything while it's waiting for the next item. So that's the concept of a queue. A topic is similar with the only difference being that there are uh, oftentimes multiple consumers of a topic. So it's kind of like a subscription model. Uh, queues many times will offer guaranteed delivery as well. So you, once you commit it onto the queue, uh, you can be assured that if the computer loses power, it's either still going to be on the queue or the producer will have picked it up in that time. So there are a lot of queue management software available. There's IMQ, OpenMQ, MQ Series from IBM, WebSphere MQ, and then ActiveMQ. ActiveMQ is uh, free. It's, a, it's an Apache project. Uh, I like it very much. It's probably my favorite. It has It's easy to install and has a nice web console. So we're going to go ahead and grab the uh, Windows download here, and we'll give it a moment to download. Now it's downloaded, so I'm simply going to open the file. Or we can, it doesn't matter, we can do open. And I'm going to right-click and choose Copy. And I'm going to take this to where I put all my programs. Honestly, it doesn't really matter where you put it because we're going to install it as a service. I'm simply going to paste it here uh, where I have C programs, so I'll remember where it is. Now it's unzipped, so let's install it as a service. I navigate into the directory and I click on bin, and oh gosh, now I have a decision to make. We have to choose 32 or 64 based on our Java version, not on our Windows version. How in the world do we figure this out? And how much of my life have I spent installing something in the wrong Java version only to figure out much later that I was wrong? So what we're going to do is open a command prompt and say java-d64-version. Okay, and you see that it comes out and it says Java Hotspot 64-bit server. That means I'm running 64-bit. If I got a message that said something like, uh, you know, this version doesn't support 64-bit, then I wouldn't be 64-bit. So I click on Win64, and now I want to click on Install Service. That's a batch file. I'll tell you from experience, I really prefer running batch files from the command line because if there's an error, I will see it. Uh, sometimes if you click on the batch file and there's an error, it just closes without a chance to see it. So how do I open up a command window with this directory? Well, that's easy as well. Click in the address bar, type in CMD, and notice the command window that appears is exactly the directory that we're in. Uh, so that's a nice little trick. So uh, I'm going to go ahead and do install service, and I'm going to sit back and relax, and guess what? Access is denied. Uh, so what I need to do is I need to open this as an administrator. So unfortunately, my little trick won't work after all. So I'm going to go to Start. I'm going to go to Programs. And then I'm going to go to Accessories, Command Prompt. Right-click and choose Run as Administrator. Choose Yes. And now we're going to have to go the old-fashioned way. So we'll say CD and then the uh, slash that's above the Enter key on the American keyboard. Uh, CD programs, uh, make sure we go to the right one, programs, there we go, CD Apache, CD Bin, CD Win64, and now let's try install service again. Fingers crossed, and ActiveMQ installed. That was pretty quick, wasn't it? Let's verify it's installed. I'm going to go to Start, Programs, and I want to go to Services. To be honest, maybe it's quicker if I just do it like this. Services, there we go. What this should do is install ActiveMQ as a service. So let's take a look. And ActiveMQ, you see automatic. It has not been started, but the next time we, we, we reboot, it will automatically start. 
Let's go ahead and manually start it now, fingers crossed. And started. Now how can we confirm that it, that it has started? Well, it has an easy to use web-based interface. You just have to know the port. So I'm gonna to go to HTTP colon slash slash localhost and now the port for ActiveMQ, the default port is 8161. If you don't remember that, it's a good idea to bookmark it. And here we go. ActiveMQ is up and running. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and snap that as a bookmark. Good, because I know I'm going to want to come back to that. Manage ActiveMQ Broker. The default username is admin. And the default password is also admin. Go ahead and choose login. Now, Here's one of my favorite things about ActiveMQ. One of the new themes that we have in software development is the idea of no configuration deployment. In other words, you don't have to, and by the way, go ahead and save this password. You don't have to explicitly declare uh, what you want ahead of time. It saves a lot of headache, a lot of, a lot of pain. What's nice about ActiveMQ is it supports this model because you don't have to define the queues in advance. In traditional, uh, you know, old school software development, you'd have to actually go in and create queues before you could use them. Now what happens with ActiveMQ is if you, if you publish to a queue and that queue doesn't exist, ActiveMQ simply makes it. So you define the queue with uh, maybe some JNDI or something like that in Java, which we'll take a look at in a future video. And as soon as ActiveMQ realizes, hey, I don't have this MQ, I don't have this queue, boom. Uh, it makes it and the queue is ready and then you can go to this interface to look at the queue. Another thing I really like about ActiveMQ is if you have a text-based message, you can view the message here in ActiveMQ uh, if it's sitting on the queue and hasn't been consumed off the queue. You can even move the message around. You might have a message that keeps getting rejected by the consumer and thus it's sticking on the queue. You can go in here and do some manual intervention. So a very nice, lightweight queue manager that's easy to set up, easy to use. And this will get us started on our next few videos where we're actually going to implement some queues. I look forward to seeing you then.